This is a user story map, a popular planning technique used in software development. It's also helpful for understanding other types of projects, not just software projects. You may have seen one built with index cards or sticky notes. There's also advantages to building these maps with a digital tool like Cardboard. If you'd like to learn more about story mapping, there are many resources available, including this book by O'Reilly. In this video, we're just going to focus on getting you up to speed with the basics of story mapping so that you can create them in Cardboard. This is a completed story map for a fictitious company called Pixtagram. The goal of user story maps like this one is to help you have better conversations with your teams. Typical project tracking tools make it hard to discuss the bigger picture of a project because they lose context. The structure of a story map puts you in your user's shoes and it makes it easy to have conversations where you are telling stories of a user interacting with your product. At a high level, a story map is constructed of three things. Shown here as yellow sticky notes, the body of a map is made up of tasks. These are the actions the user is taking as they are using your product. The body can also contain details that are relevant to the tasks, as well as alternative ways to perform a task. The top of the map is made of activities. Activities group the tasks below them, giving them a simpler name that is a good summary. Activities make it easier to discuss a map without going over every part in detail. The horizontal lines represent slices or swim lanes through the map. These allow us to make priority decisions by grouping tasks working toward a specific outcome. The first swim lane represents your highest priority and is what you will build first. Additional swim lanes below this will represent new priorities or outcomes that you want to target that will build upon the first. When creating a story map, you won't start out with the structure right away. Instead, you'll build up to it as you create your map. Typically, you start by quickly creating a small set of tasks. These are the tasks that easily come to mind as you think about how a user will interact with your product. You may hear of this referred to as the happy path, since it's usually the story of a simple and successful journey through your product. Once you have this first set of tasks, you can begin to group them under activities. Some activities may only contain one task, others could have many. At this point, you're just trying to give some higher level descriptions to the tasks you have created. Your activities should be organized from left to right in the order they are likely to occur. This creates the narrative flow for your map, making it easy to walk through the story from beginning to end as if you were reading it out loud. You should also order the tasks underneath each activity from top to bottom in the order they occur so they also read like a small story within the activity. At this point, take a step back and review your map. This review step is a great time to add in parts of the story you may have missed. Ask yourself if you should add anything before or after the flow you have at this point. You can also fill in additional tasks where you may have missed something. Good questions to ask here are what needs to happen if something goes wrong or detailing out additional choices the user could make along the journey. Once you have all this in place, you can begin to slice your map. Start by adding just two horizontal lines, one directly below your activities, and another one somewhere further down. Now, arrange your map so only the tasks that are relevant to the first outcome you want to achieve stay in the first swim lane. You can now check your map by reading through the cards in your first swim lane from left to right and top to bottom. This should be the complete story for your MVP, or minimum viable product. When creating user story maps, keep these tips and tricks in mind. Remember that maps are living documents. You use them to get an understanding of your product in the beginning, but you should also revisit them later as your strategy changes and you build things. Maps should be created collaboratively, not in isolation. Include a diverse set of roles when creating your story map. These perspectives will help you build better products. When creating story maps, use time boxes to limit the amount of time you have to create the maps. 
This keeps things moving and helps you create maps quickly and not get hung up in the details. Story maps are meant to encourage conversation on your projects, not for comprehensive project tracking. Now you're ready to get started creating your own story maps in Cardboard. For more resources, visit our website at cardboardit.com.